that's great uh, now today we will start uh, our new topic that is direct memory access okay so uh, any doubt before we start a new topic any doubt in the previous one in the last topic that we were discussing read back command have you gone through it any doubt in case you have you can stop me we can discuss that and then we can go ahead to the next topic in case any doubt please let me know in the case of read back command is it clear to you is read back command clear to you or should we discuss it again okay uh, what about others are you clear with it okay great so now uh, okay what is more dxc register uh, that is uh, the address of command word uh, or we can say that uh, that control register is copied to dx so that you can use it as in an out instruction out instruction will if it is a 16 bit address you need to put it in dx right so that is what the um, move dx counter one that is the address of counter one that you are main maintaining like 74 94 kind of thing that you are maintaining that with a 16 bit that you are uh, sh uh, moving it to dx so that you can use out or in instruction is it clear priyank okay uh, okay, suppose I want to, uh, su suppose my uh, my A72, if you remember that type of question we had, that A72, A2 is having particular bit pattern, right? Suppose it is 100110. This is the bit pattern of A72, A2. That is all uh, six bits, right? Now remaining two, what we store in AL? That is what you want to uh, move, whatever value, so whatever the value of command word. So suppose you want to set command word as uh, some uh, some value, whatever the command word that you want to set, that you will store in AL. But that AL you have to keep in command word, that register, that address of that register is kept in DX. Okay, so uh, command word is located where, where my A1 and A0 will become 1-1. One, one. It will become one one. So whatever the remaining alternating pattern is, that is A15 to A2, whatever the pattern is, that pattern plus this one one will be the address of command word. So this command word should have particular value. That value is stored in AL. Like you are storing, like you are selecting counter zeros, and then this will be zero zero, the next words. So whatever the, the mode you want to adjust, whatever you want to adjust, the content will be stored in AL and that address will be stored in DX where to put it out. Is it clear now, Priyank? Okay. So uh, any other doubt in case, please ask so that we can go to the next. Otherwise, previous doubts uh, means counter zero. What means counter zero? What means counter zero? No, not in DX. Here, this is, see what, okay, listen. I have to adjust command word, right? So I will have some value in the command word, like uh, suppose I, I, I want to store some value in the command word. How can I store, like I, if I am selecting counter zero, then I am selecting mode three, then I am selecting uh, reading LSB and LSB both, and I am making it as, as a binary counter. This is something that I want to store in command word. So this is the word, what it is, 36, 36 is the word that I want to store in command word. But how to access that command word? How to address that control register? How to address it? How to how can I access? Can I simply throw it to somewhere, right? So how 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 can I? Uh, okay, so that, then thirty six, right? So now it is working. My counter zero will work in mode three, right? So that is, that I'm setting this adjustment. I have to set in the address of control word. That address of the control word, which is adjusted by your a zero and a one lines as one one. That is, uh, and other, other whatever your pattern that is dependent on your chip select, this entire address will be stored in DX. If So what DX will store? This, it will store address of control word. Then whenever I will write out DX and 36, 36, ideally I cannot write this, so I will write AL, but what will have in AL? AL will have 36. So what will happen? And what will move dx will have what dx will have dx will have move dx 
address of the control word. Okay, this control word, but address of the control word in DX, value of the control word in AL, and this will store AL value in DX uh, at, at the address DX, that is at the control word. Okay, now suppose I want, because I was just in my counter zero works in the mode three, then what I will do? I will write like, okay, move DX counter zero. Address of counter zero, how to obtain it when A1, A0 is zero, zero. Right, so I'm just I'm I'm now I'm pointing to counter zero, right? When a one and a zero will become zero zero, okay? Then I will write count whatever the count I want to write. Suppose I want uh, uh, for uh, uh, suppose I'm writing count six. That means for three clock period it will be on and three clock period it will be on because it is a square wave. So I will write move al that six value, and then I will write out again. So out is what that at dx address put this value six. Understood? Is it clear? Everyone, any doubt? Any other doubt in case you have, you can ask. Any other doubt in case you have, please ask. Check your PPT, we, we are not in hurry, but whatever we should we, we learned, that must be clear to us. Any doubt, please ask. Should I repeat anything in the previous lecture? Are you clear? Yes or no with the previous sessions? Any doubt? Are you clear with it? All of you? Okay. So now I'm assuming that we can go with the next one that is direct memory access. Have you, have, have you learned this direct memory access anywhere? In the, I think in CSA you must have studied a basic one. Do you know what is direct memory access? What is that? So what do you think what it is? What do you think what it is? So generally what happens, see, let me explain you the basic concept. Uh, I have a processor, right? This is my microprocessor. It has buses. Which buses it has? So it has address buses. It has data buses and it has control buses. So I'm representing by this, I'm representing all the buses. Okay, address bus, data bus, control bus. Okay, and it has a memory. Right, so what it will do, it can read memory, it can write memory, it can address particular location by using address bus. It will use its data bus to take data from the memory. And what will happen and uh, what it can do is, uh, uh, it can read or write both, so by that it will use control lines. Yes, using Achintan says that using data segment directly instead of uh, GPRS. Can you uh, can you explain this GPRS in detail? What do you want to say by uh, using data segment directly instead of GPRS? General purpose registers. Okay, general purpose registers directly instead of using. Um, yes, you can say in that way, uh, but uh, yes, true. Uh, you can say general purpose registers are not used. So eventually what is not used? What is not used? Uh, Rishi says that when large amount of data is to be transferred, every time passing data through control bus is a time consuming. So we give direct access to memory and remove the mediator. I agree, slight changing, slight uh, correction will be in, in uh, Chintan's point and Rishi's point, but otherwise I, I agree that both of you are saying correct here, you are correct here. Slight change will be there, slight correction will be there, but concept wise, I think you know, some uh, clearance in the concept is needed and that we definitely we will do. I agree both of you are uh, correct here, but let us go uh, with proper uh, terminology so that what will happen, so in future we can whenever we refer the things we will be uh, very much clear and we will be, it will be very easy to understand the programming okay so I, i'm going to correct your points here right but let us see uh, uh, what exactly it is see so now now focus on my words what i'm saying here microprocessor addresses uh, the memory right using its address buses Right, so particular location is selected. Now control signals are generated, whether it is reading or writing. So that control buses are used for uh, selecting read or write operation. And 
uh, data bus will be used to uh, take the data or give the data to that. So now, Rishi, can you understand what is the change that you should make in your statement? The passing of data should be through. Which buses will pass the data? Yes, they will be data buses. Control buses are also. So now tell me, uh, to access a memory, which bus is important? Is it address bus? Is it data bus? Or is it control bus? Or all of them? All of them. See, so so that is what is important here. So if I am accessing memory, I need to access. Uh, I need to access all these three buses. Okay, so that is what we have observed. We know that, and just we have made it clear so that we can understand in future the things we can understand easily. Okay, so this is what uh, uh, one thing. Okay, so now I am reading from the memory. Suppose I have connected I/O. What is I/O? I/O is like uh, uh, you you are printing something. It is a printer. I/O can be your printer, right? Or it can be uh, any other device which takes the input and stores to memory. Okay, suppose it is I/O. Now, what is the job? What is the task that read from the I/O and write in the memory? Okay, or what it can be other job that your I/O is output device like your uh, printer, right? So, what will happen uh, from the uh, from the memory? You have to print something. Okay, so now let us observe the things now. What to access I/O, whether to read or write, that depends which kind of device it is. But both of the operations are possible. It can be input device, it can be output device. If it is input device, I have to, uh, I have to read it. If it is output device, I have to write there. Right? As a processor, I have to write there. Okay. So now to access I/O, which buses are important? What address bus will do? What control bus will do? And what data bus will do? What the control bus will do? It will decide whether it is writing operation or reading operation. Right? So that is required. So if it is input device, you will need reading uh, that read signal high uh, low because it is active low. So in case uh, and if it is a write device, you have to write there. Then according to that control signal, you need to generate. So control signals are important. Do we need uh, address buses here to access I/O? Do we need address buses? Yes, we need it. Why so? Why we need? So otherwise, how will you come to know that out of available so many IOs, yes, it will be a port address, right? It will be so many IO devices, which IO de device we are talking about, right? So of course, address buses are important and data buses. So what will be the data bus? What will be the job of data bus? So that will be, uh, yes, it will be passing of data. Okay. Now, so what is the job like? Uh, uh, I have to suppose. Let us take any one operation. Suppose from memory, I have to uh, pass uh, data to I/O. So, what will what my microprocessor will do? What is the job of my microprocessor now? So, first instruction: read from memory. So, therefore, that you will have one instruction: move that some memory location, right? And uh, move some memory from memory location from some memory location to internal register that is that is where the point of uh, chintan comes general purpose register will come uh, uh, come into picture right so suppose i am writing certain memory location address suppose it is x address of memory from x address of memory move to some general purpose register say b x c x whatever you want to consider let us keep it in ax itself so i am taking it data in ax Right. Then what I will do? Okay. So now it is available with the microprocessor. So read operation has been completed from the memory. Okay. What is the next ta task? That uh, you need to uh, move that data, or uh, the other I should write is out dx. Right. In dx, I am assuming that I/O address is stored. Move dx ax, or whatever your data is a. Assuming that eight eight uh, bits configuration we are using. So let us. Keep it as eight bit only. So one location at a time is read, and that location we are moving towards. So this this is just the thing. Okay. So now you are simply reading from memory and writing to memory. Okay. Fine. And what is the next thing that we will do? Uh, then you have to you you will require one more uh, thing. What will be that counter? You will require decrement your counter, and then you will require a jump. What it will do if it is not zero, your counter is not zero. Suppose you have some 
data to transfer right so if that count is not zero then uh, you have to keep doing the same thing you again fetch the data from the next location possibly you are incrementing your address increment x maybe you are going to the next location from x to x plus one right so you are going to next location decrement your counter and if it is not zero then again go to uh, your location your in, your x value is now incremented earlier it was pointing to this now it is pointing to next location i hope you can understand the point so here i am going to this is where i will have a loop so this is the operation that i need to do for uh, passing data to memory okay but here if you will observe by this instruction we are just uh, so what exactly we are doing here we are uh, simply see my, what microprocessor is doing observe it is fetching this instruction from memory observe first it is from the code segment it is fetching this instruction that i have to take data from ax so fetch cycle is uh, vestige right what is the next thing it is doing right uh, 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 what what the next thing it is doing uh, uh, that it is decoding it right so it is decoding this instruction that like, okay it is move instruction so that is the second cycle that is uh, it is using for this second clock cycle and after that it takes data from this which is important thing for me taking data from this that cycle is important for me okay so that data is available now here maybe right back is extra cycle that fourth cycle right back you know that pipelining at the time you studied for uh, uh, that micro operations are there so fourth right back command to al that is the fourth cycle you might be using okay so in this you have used four cycle out of that just one cycle was of your use okay what is the next one here if you will observe okay this is done what next is that you have to again fetch this again decode this again uh, understand this right and then uh, after decoding what you have to do again you have to execute this so execution is again of importance for our importance so actually we are using just two clock cycles here that are that is of our use unnecessary part is what that you are see one in one cycle you are reading in one one instruction you are reading in one instruction you are writing so anyway if it is uh, you know the direct memory access is going to do this directly then it will happen in one instruction itself right so if it is happening in one instruction so anyway this two uh, instead of this two instruction we will need just one instruction additionally we will save the time of uh, we will save the time of fetching uh, or we can say for decoding execution etc why we will save that time because for that we are going to use a special controller right that controller is going to uh, do that job and that controller is designed or rather i should say that uh, some device some ic some hardware is there that hardware is designed for this purpose only why we have to decode and understand here because microprocessor is a general purpose it is having in instruction out instruction move instruction addition multiplication every instruction it is having this microprocessor is designed for doing multiple tasks right so that's why it is having multi various operations right you are having stack operations you are having loop operations it is have, it is it is designed for doing variety of tasks and that's why you have to fetch and decode but suppose i say this processor or something some some powerful device which is designed for just uh, just moving data from memory and writing it to io or vice versa right it is just for that operation that from memory to io operations only it is not doing just copying operation it is not doing anything else then it will not need to understand this this many instructions right so so what is the point here what was the job of microprocessor i why i required because i was having i need to control this address bus data bus and control bus to control the buses i would required microprocessor the but problem with the microprocessor was because it is a general purpose it has variety of instructions it is not dedicated hardware for this copy operation and hence it requires two different cycles for reading and writing additional two different instruction for reading and writing and additionally extra uh, operations for fetching decoding etc so it is wasting lot of time you will say okay but it is wasting just two three cycles and we will not even realize that cycles when the operation is for two three bytes transfer i agree if it is two three byte transfer you should not use additional any device but when the transfer is in gigabits when the transfer is in terabits when the transfer is uh, in even meg hundreds of megabits then this will be uh, this will be considerable delay okay and at that time we will require a device which is dedicated for this copying operation 
okay and that is what what it should do it should definitely copy one thing that is the base job is that it should copy okay but what additionally it should do it should be able to it should be bus master it should be uh, able to control this address buses data buses and uh, this uh, this uh, data lines okay so all this uh, i mean all this address but data and control buses should be accessed by it okay so that is what 8237 is what is 8237 that uh, it, uh, it it does so first of all what is the job of 8237 it must have access of this buses okay second what it should have that second uh, it should be able to it, it is a dedicated hardware okay so it definitely here what 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 are the requirements of uh, this hardware what can be the requirement of this hardware so it should be able to read right so uh, uh, okay what uh, this hardware must be must be able to do let us let us think of that i need one hardware definitely it should be able to control my buses okay so it must have the control of data bus address bus and control lines okay so one thing that is clear in our mind otherwise otherwise we will not be able to access this too okay suppose we are having a, a control of uh, control of uh, control lines we are having access of control lines which signals we need to generate can you tell me what are the signals this uh, 8237 might need suppose i am just talking about control lines i am just talking about control lines so can you tell me uh, which are the operations that this device might need what are the signals this must generate or might generate may need in future not at a time but all possible signals that my 8237 may need control signals what what kind of operation it can, it should be able to do on the memory see control signals are nothing but read and write for now you can understand that only okay so uh, tell me with the memory will it require to do read operation this device this additional device will it ever require to do this memory read operation does it able to generate it should should it be able to i mean should it generate this memory read signal priyank says yes what about others take are you clear with my question what i'm asking this device must generate control signals this device must access address bus this device must must access uh, data bus we will go to this ad, ad, uh, address and data bus case let us start with control okay so if it is uh, if it is generating control signals which kind of control signals are required so now let us recall what is control signals is read and write signals what it can read it can read memory or io will it require to read memory ever when it is transferring having transfer operation from memory to io will it require to generate memory read operation uh, why kushal why do you think it will not require see what i am asking again see it will read from the memory and write to io one of one possible thing right what kind of operation it will require suppose my dma controller transfers data from memory to io which operation will it require what it has to do will it uh, write to mem it is reading the memory and writing to io so which operation it will require here memory read right are you getting it so uh, yes it is memory read and and what it will do here what it will do here it will be memory read and io write that is what the signal is required to transfer from memory to io is it okay is it clear to you now whenever uh, i have to transfer from io to memory is it a possible operation i may require data from io to memory in which case it will be io to memory when io will be input device when it is inputting me some data i have to store it in memory right it can be keyboard it can be some sensor we don't know io is input whenever it is input device it is whenever it is input device at that time we have, we will read it from io and we will write it to memory so which signals we will require here we have, when i am reading from io and writing to memory which signals are required so i will need io read and memory write so this 8237 must have two type of cycles right so one cycle is what you are reading from memory writing to io that means your io device is an output device it needs something to display okay so that is your uh, one cycle and another operation that your 8237 can do is io to memory transfer that means my io device is input device and out 
and you are saving that data to memory when you are in this cycle at that time you will need two signals parallelly which are those memory read and io write parallelly at the same time you will need these two signals so that both of them will get activated in the particular mode okay then uh, what will happen here uh, here also what will happen you will need uh, io read and memory write at the same time so let me uh, let us uh, do that of course we will come to this point again but uh, uh, let me show you that uh, okay so what we have discussed here see this is what we have discussed okay so these are the signals that we need memory read memory write io write and io read these four signals must be part of your 8237 is it clear so these are the control signals that we will need okay now so uh, this uh, dma uh, we have uh discuss these things for the dma that is what i was telling you this is this is hardware controlled uh, device right it is a hardware it uh, it is this entire operation of copying does is it is it is less controlled by software more controlled by hardware okay so okay fine so let us uh, these things we have already discussed now we will come here Okay. now whenever we'll before we come here uh, let us discuss how exactly that happens what see this is what we have already seen what it is see <clears throat> this is your microprocessor okay this is your address bus data bus which are latch actually if it is latch then you have to use this uh, latch to separate them okay and this is your control bus okay now all of them uh, must be connected with this all of them must be connected with your uh, uh, peripheral device right if it is not shown address bus definitely address bus are also connected okay so right now we are uh, of course all these buses are connected but this it is uh, true here all these buses are connected with io that is what we have seen by this diagram all these buses are connected with memory and they are connected with io so that is what is shown this is just different representation of the same thing they have shown this latch because you know that some of the uh, buses are multiplex like ad0 to ad15 if they are uh, if they are not separated then you will need a address latch so that part is ale will be needed to separate them out and everything that you know in short three buses are directly connected somewhere comes dma controller that is 8237 that we are discussing about whenever it get activated what will happen this switch which is connected with control to this buses are in the control of microprocessor now this buses will come into the control of uh, this dma as you can see this dma controller will need this dma controller will it will need this access right this of course here it will be needed this access will be needed so what is a case like you can understand like there is a switch uh, which is pointed to x otherwise whenever dma controller gets activated when it comes into picture it will need access of this all buses right so uh, all these buses which are connected to memory and io and uh, this will generate its own signal will put on those buses and those buses will activate particular uh, particular location of memory and io okay uh, now what is the case so now what is the thing that uh, uh, it is not actually uh, that hardware switch again uh, uh, we will see that how exactly that operation takes place but logically you can understand it is like a switch here okay it is not like physical switch we will uh, we will have this okay dma is direct memory access that is what uh, uh, is given here na we are accessing memory directly without interference of microprocessor that is what the importance of uh, what you can say is a dma direct memory access okay now of course we will come to this point but now exactly what happens now let us see this scenario then i will come here and then we will go back to other thing suppose you are a user right and you need data kushal what are you using phone keep it in a side all of you it is 
you know that it is uh, you cannot use phone in the ongoing lecture you should you should not use whatsapp in ongoing lecture yes or no okay uh what is the case uh you are you are having um, you are you you are a user and you need the data right so what you will do you will simply tell your processor that i need data data means it can be from your um, it can be from your uh, suppose you are a user and you need data that means your io device is print you want to print something from your uh, or uh, from your disk from your hard disk or you this is your memory right this is your memory or disk whatever right you want data to be printed you want it in printed form so you will inform your processor print the particular data so what your processor will do okay your processor will uh, 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 will ask your memory right so it will ask your uh, memory to uh, to what you can say uh, 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 to give the data or be, make the data ready or uh, i have some i will just indicate that that uh, uh, this data is needed okay so that data so now what will happen now your device this device memory or it can be io that depends on the operation right your device from where you will need the data will send what okay it will say okay i am ready and it is going to send some request to your dma controller this is a dma controller okay so now dma controller will come to know uh, that this data is demanded so i need to do the operation okay whenever the io or memory will make a request for data transfer then your memory 8237 will come to know okay it will uh, some data is demanded so now i have to come into picture otherwise it can be in um, i mean uh, otherwise it of course it is not it will not be bus master for the all the time right so as soon as it comes so now it will know okay now i have to be bus master so it is going to inform the uh, processor that um, uh that uh, uh, please hold i need to do the data transfer that you have requested okay actually it was requested by cpu is that processor as a user you are not going to tell uh, the dma directly you are going to tell your processor itself right so now this dma will say please hold processor will say okay i am holding what is the meaning of holding here it will it will leave the control of all data and control buses here so it is it is going to leave its all control from the data and control buses address bus is everything that means that switch from x position to will get shifted to y position now the control is given to 8237 now if once it is ready then what it will do uh, once it is ready then it will inform your io device from which the request was received that okay i am ready to do the transfer you also be ready so that means it is acknowledged okay so what are the operation that you are having your io device will give the request to your 8237 that i want to do the data transfer i have request to data transfer and that who has generated the data transfer request cpu itself who has given to instruction to the cpu cpu cannot have its instruction by own so user have given that instruction right so now that io device will say please start the data transfer right so then 8237 will say okay let me ask 8237 uh, let me ask my processor to hold so that i can be bus master once it is it is uh, once processor gives all the access to this it will say okay i am hold uh, i am on hold you can start your access so here the buses are given to 8237 and once it is receiving all its uh, what we can say all its uh, 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 access then it is going to uh, give that acknowledgement to this okay so this is known as one channel what is one channel that one io device for one channel i will need need one request line here in 8237 there must be one pin which will take request from io one pin must be there that will give acknowledgement to io and if i am having this two pin i can handle one io device suppose i have one more io device i want to connect one more io device this can also uh ask for the access direct memory access or this can also ask for the direct memory access this is io1 this is io2 suppose it is so so i will need one more pin which will be connected with d request pin with this that means request from 2 will be received on that pin and acknowledgement of 2 will be given on the d acknowledgement pin which is dedicated for io2 so this is known as second channel 
still we need to data read and write then cycle is also wasted then still we need to read data uh, that operation we are coming to priyank we will come to that operation you will be clear with it right now just what we are discussing hardware we are discussing the pins which are the pins needed operation still we have not studied is it clear so after just a completion of this operation if you are not still clear you can ask right right now we are not discussing the operation we are discussing how many pins are needed and what is the importance of each pin okay so this is channel 2 okay this is channel because right now you don't understand uh, the operations read and write will be needed now otherwise how we are going to um uh, uh, we how we are going to do the transfer you have to read it and you have to write right but that will happen in one cycle itself one uh, operation itself okay so read and write without that it will not be possible to do the transfer that is definitely needed and that will come to na priyank can you uh, please wait let us discuss uh, the oh, that uh, what we can say uh, the pins first then we will come to the operation and then we will discuss how it is in useful see one thing that uh, uh, that must be cleared in your mind is what that here best, best uh, simplest thing if you want to understand about dma other advantages we will learn but simplest thing that you can understand is the microprocessor is not occupied in transferring the microprocessor is free to do any other task you are you are having one any other if it is a gigabit transfer uh, this is simply reading and writing reading and writing that is not job of microprocessor so that is the base advantage that we are having using this 8237 Additional advantage that we are having uh, this DMA controller is what that uh, fetching and decoding of this instruction can be saved. So few clock cycles we are going to save, and that few clock cycle will make a huge difference. We will not uh, have one a separate instruction for reading and one separate instruction for writing. Is it clear? Why we will not have? How we will do so? That is a separate thing. That is what we will discuss later. Okay, but. what will not be there that i am telling you right now okay so that's why i am telling you once let me complete it and then you will um, get the point okay. now uh, so what is the point like suppose i am having third io then i will need one more bit so and i will need one more uh, pin of d request and d acknowledgement okay so how many such channels how many such io i can connect For eight two three seven, it is four. You may say, why four? Why not forty? Why not four thousand? Again, it depends on your eight two three. That is depends on that limitation of pins or whatever you say. Okay, but in eight two three seven, at a time you can connect four uh, devices, four different devices. That means for each device you will have D request and D acknowledgement. That means four channels. That means four D request bit and four D acknowledgement uh, pins. totally eight pins we have discussed out of this you will say but no in my system we will not have just four io we will have say 40 io then what to do then you have cascade arrangements cascading of uh, 8237 is possible so you can increase the size by connecting one of the 8237 in one of the uh, io pin of one of this channel so cascading is possible right so again three more uh, you will three more io you will, you will get so in that way you can uh increase the size by using the cascading otherwise if you want to use one that is a limitation that you will have just four io device okay so uh, fine so this is uh, so 8237 particularly is designed for four channels and eight uh, lines we have discussed the request and the acknowledgement what about suppose one device one and device three asks dma at the same time i have four channels so suppose four channels and four devices are connected suppose two of them are demanding uh, the access at the same time what is what will happen if it is the case what do you think that 8237 must have some uh, priority arrangements do you think that it is required for 8237 to have some priority arrangements Yes or no? Do you think it is required? Is it possible to? Uh, is it possible that two devices asking the DM at uh, the direct memory transfer at the same time? Right? It may. It is. It is possible. So we are having. Uh, uh, we are having that operation. What is that operation? That 
priority arrangements. So what are what, what kind of priority we are having? Two type of priority. One is fixed priority, and another is rotating priority. Fixed priority is what it is hardcore uh, priorities. Like whichever is connected with channel zero. Actually, four channels, but names are zero to three. Channel zero to channel three. Okay, so zero channel is having highest priority. Third channel is having lowest priority, and it is a fixed priority. Right, and one more option that we are having rotating priority. You know that the, the starvation will take place, right? So rotating priority we are having. What it is? In that, what will happen? That uh, uh, suppose device three transfers, then it will have lowest priority, and the uh, device zero will have the highest priority. Suppose device one transfers, device two will have highest priority, and device one will have lowest priority. I hope you are, it is making sense to you. The next device after. Uh, the one that is transmitted has the highest priority, and again in that manner. So it is a rotating priority. Okay, so uh, two modes are supported: fixed and rotating. So now let us see this uh, pin diagram. What we understood from this? Which pins we understood here? Do we understand this now? DMA acknowledgement, D egg, zero to three. So these pins are. this pins must be clear to you now right what is next this dma request this four dma request for the four channels so this must be clear this d request bit and this is d acknowledgments okay do you understand this hold this hold is connected with which pin of uh, 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 which pin of this hold is connected with hold pin of cpu or you know that uh, uh, just a second which pin uh, if you uh, if you know this rt uh, gq pins sorry it is r q g t pins and r q g t 0 pins uh, of if you remember in short we i generally refer them as hold and hold acknowledgement but this is other name that you might have uh, come across while studying uh, that 8086 but actually i it is also referred this is the other name of the same that hold and hold acknowledgement so this is for uh, dma request that is hold and this is for hold acknowledgement right so i generally refer it as hold and hold acknowledgement but other name is rqgt pins right so uh, fine so this is what uh, uh, is done okay so this this two pins from uh, so this is hold pin will be the hold request which is connected with uh, that hold pin of your 8086 or uh, rqgt pin particular one and then this is also connected with that 8086 and it will receive the hold acknowledgement back this is these are the data bus these are the data buses okay so that you i think you can understand now what is okay this is clock what is the use of clock to run this operation of course we need to provide the clock here so that uh, uh, like the same way we are providing this to 8086 it is it, the, the specification is given what is this 5 megahertz or less you can provide here uh, for 8237 particularly so your clock can be uh, 82 uh, it can be 5 megahertz or lesser so this is a clock signal okay now this is chip select what can be the use of this chip select is for giving whenever you are uh, uh, whenever you, you of course you this pins are for the selecting this chip instead of if you are having multiple pins multiple devices connected with so definitely you have to select the particular pin and for that we are having uh, as chip select pin to select this 8237 right uh, so so what are the uh, uh, okay now which are the remaining pins okay see end of process of course we will cover uh, this address stop and okay this pins of reset is uh, for resetting entire operation everything will start from beginning of course we will see what and why uh, that we'll see we'll come back to this points remaining points now let us go to this discussion once again so what it says um 
what it says uh, this operation we have studied what it says that uh, uh, this whenever uh, dma uh, so whenever your disk controller or your io device uh, sends d request to dma controller and this shows that d request shows that that i am connected i am on and i want to transfer the data to memory without disturbing the processor that is what the meaning of this d request pin okay so what will be the uh, on receiving d request what will happen hold request will be generated by the dma controller hold hold signal shows that that dma controller uh, needs the access to system buses that is all control data and uh, that address buses and cpu uh, sends that when the processor makes the buses free that means when the switches are connected from x position to y position when they are connected from x position to y position at that time at that time what will happen it will send this uh, uh, hold signal and on gaining this control over this buses it will be in the active cycle what is the meaning of that it is activated dma uh, gets enabled direct memory access starts but before it actually starts it has to send this d acknowledgement uh, bit that i have told you that uh, this d acknowledgement to peripheral that i am starting the operation okay and that will be active cycle and otherwise if i am not doing the, whenever the switches are connected in the x position at that time i am in the idle cycle that dma controller is in the idle cycle when the switches are in the connection of uh, they are connected with processor i am not the bus master when i am not the bus master it is idle cycle whenever i am the bus master at that time uh, it is uh, uh, what you can say uh, it is active cycle okay so this hold and hold acknowledgements uh, we have stood, uh, taken so in um, okay so bulk, actually what will happen peripheral will take over the bus control that is the important thing here okay now uh, so this is the same thing once again the, we have already discussed them features we need to study so what are the features uh, that four it is a four channel device okay and at the same time it can access 64k uh, uh, memory at the same time if you uh, if you want to transfer uh, the memory then how many uh, what is what is the location that you can access is 64k of course whenever i will take the operation when i i will take the program at that time i will come to this point again but just this is the observation just just keep this number in mind whenever we will need i will refer to the same so what are the features let us understand the features um various modes will be there for the direct memory access that we will learn but it is a four independent channels are there okay one mode is auto initialize what as i told you multiple modes are there one of them is auto initialize that means what will happen in this mode suppose i am transferring certain data of, uh, and uh, from memory to uh, some printer right and that memory gets updated updated again and again like it is uh, some sensor data right so that locations get updated again and again so what i need to do as soon as it uh, um, i mean uh, continuously i need to print them so same locations i need to pass again and again to my output device same thing can happen in the reverse way i need to store the same data again and again in the same input location so it, it will need auto initialization what is that whatever the location whatever your uh, initial uh, uh, memory or whatever uh, what we can say whatever addresses were there earlier the same addresses should be reloaded okay so so same operation can be repeated so from wherever you started again load the same that is mean, meaning of auto initialization of course whenever program we will take at that time we will learn but one of the mode is auto initialization so each channel can be used can be used uh, in this mode and uh, they can be started with different count definite all of them no need not to start from the same location okay it can transfer data between memory to memory till time what we were discussing that memory to io transfer but it is also possible to transfer memory to memory that means both locations are memory itself so dma can help in that way as well So you will say, but memory to memory transfer, it a microprocessor can also do, na? Yes, it can do, but it will be slower, right? So if you want a faster operation at that time, uh, even though for the memory to memory, you can operate uh, this eight two three seven. So this and this will come when we will do the programming. Okay. Of course, what it should be able to do, it should be able to increment or decrement the address. Definitely, we have to increment. Uh, suppose one location is accessed then you have to go to the next location so you should be able to either increment it can be the incremented address or it can be decremented address right okay and at 
37 is generally working with 3 megahertz clock. Maximum supported is 5 megahertz, but generally it is operated on 3 megahertz clock. Transfer rate is given per second. You can transfer this much. You will say, okay, this is not a, a huge amount for us, but this is also not. Uh, I mean, this is support. This is uh, in that era 8086 uh, compatible. Uh, what you can say, uh, DMA controller. So for that, it is it is a huge data rate. You can say. Okay. So fine. So uh, of course you can uh, exp you can expand it by cascading that we have taken. Okay. Now, uh, what about this end of operation EOP line? What can be the use of this EOP line? This point is also required to read. And what one pin was EOP? If you remember, this is end of process. You will see it is a bidirectional. What is the meaning of bidirectional? That your process this can also generate, or it can be given from output even. That means this pin can act as output or input both. That means your eight two three seven can say it is end of process. What what do you think then? When eight two three seven will say it is end of process? Suppose I am doing some operation. That is the process for me. I am transferring data from memory to I/O. That is a process for me, right? So whenever I am completing my data transfer, I will say it is end of process. So it will indicate that okay, my operation is completed. Is it clear? So that is what uh, uh, is done here. End of process. So at that time, when my uh, eight two three seven will complete its process. When it eight two three seven will complete its trans data transfer, it will send it as an output. It will use it as output strobe. It will use it as output signal, and it will send. Okay, I have done with my transfer. One thing. Second can be okay when someone can tell. Okay, stop the process. Stop. Keep. Have the end of this process. When it can happen? When you can have end of process from the outside? Whenever uh, you are having, suppose my, uh, currently what is the case? Like my microprocessor is not having bus access. It is given to, to 8237. Generally, uh, my microprocessor will not interrupt here. Generally, it will say, okay, you complete your data transfer and then give the control back to me. But it is possible that some unavoidable task that has came to microprocessor that uh, uh, that can in, uh, that may lead. That may need this uh, access of data bus and access uh, address bus and all these buses. It is possible that microprocessor may need to stop this operation. Stop it because I have to restart. So, uh, stop it because there is a heat. Any kind of any any kind of unmaskable interrupts, unmaskable scenario can come, and um, your microprocessor wants to stop this operation. At that time, it is going to stop it by in, informing it to this and stop it. Have end of process. Okay, so that is this pin. What it says, that is end of process, that bidirectional bus to terminate DMA process, okay? And often used uh, to interrupt a DMA transfer. Generally, it is used by that, but of course, your 8237 can also inform. Uh, your 8237 can also uh, uh, use it as output pin to inform your processor to uh, uh, that I am done with my operation. Okay, so DMA can be requested, uh, okay. Fine. Now, we, uh, see. Now, what will happen? Uh, DMA request. DMA uh, request. It is the request pin. Of course, can be hardware control. It can be software control as well. Okay. So uh, you can you can make that pin high, or you can you make that DMA request by making certain register value one. Which register that you will see. So D request pin, not necessarily of not necessary to use that uh, from this pin diagram, right? You can use you can make that pin uh, by by putting hardware uh, here by compulsorily giving some high voltages here. You will make a request that is fine. It will make a request by if you are putting some high logic here. But if you are writing certain bit one in certain internal register, then also it will make this bit high. So you can generate. Uh, you can generate the request by making certain register, some internal register high as well. Which register, how to do, why to do, that is remaining to discuss. But it is possible to start it with uh, some internal uh, register as well, right? So that is what the next pin is. Okay, so one more feature that we are having. So you will say, okay, that means D request, uh, I, if I am looking at this, then D request bit is. Uh, Active high, 
and if you will see that d request that means i make have to make logic high to make a d request suppose i am making from the hardware right so it is active high that is what your point uh, that you might ask me but answer is it you can program this like some some io devices are uh, sending active high for making a request they may send 5 volt to make a dma request and some io device may send logic zero right so at that time this must be active low and that feature is provided by 8237 how to do will come but your d request bit and d acknowledgement bits are you can program them to be active high or to be active low okay so how to program them that that you will see okay so that is what the next feature is so and uh, then fine so that is uh, I, and last feature that we will learn is uh, yes this dma can improve the throughput by compressing the transfer right that uh, here generally what in general operation it will need four clock cycles not four instructions four clock cycles to transfer right from from uh, data to memory i mean memory to io but your 8237 can uh, can work in two cycles even it can work in like overclocking that you that you know right so it can work with the overclocking and it can uh, and it can provide this operation in um, in two cycles in the compressed mode it can work okay so that is the additional feature that is provided by 8237 how to program them how to use them that we will see in the next lecture this these are the things this this is the hardware of that right so of course we will study the next things in the next lecture any doubt so far you can ask me okay so we are stopping our discussion now